Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for holding the hearing today to consider the nominations of uh, Deborah Miller to be a member of the Surface Transportation Board, member Rune Kumar, to the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Global Markets and Director General of the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service. That's a long title. It is. The U.S. and foreign commercial, it's impossible to say. And Paul Janikin to be Administrator of the Maritime Administration. I want to thank each of our nominees for being here and for their willingness to serve the nation. As the committee knows well, the Surface Transportation Board plays an important role as the independent federal agency with regulatory authority over freight railroads. Among other things, the SDB is charged with resolving railroad rate and service disputes and reviewing proposed railroad mergers. Ms. Miller has had a distinguished career in the transportation sector, including her service from 2003 to 2011 as Secretary of the Kansas Department of Transportation under both Governor Sebelius and Governor Brownback. In that capacity, Ms. Miller managed more than 3,000 employees and a $1 billion budget. She was responsible for a state highway system spanning 10,000 miles, as well as overseeing short-line railroad grants and rail planning, something I can relate to as a former state rail director. I look forward to hearing her views on how the STB can help maintain a strong national rail network while also serving the interests of shippers, particularly small shippers who often have difficulty bringing a case before the STB. I'm also interested in hearing about Ms. Miller's major rail initiatives during her time as Transportation Secretary for Kansas and how her experiences there will shape her approach to issues that are brought before the Service Transportation Board. Our nominee to be Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Global Markets and Director General of the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service, Mr. Arun Kumar, has achieved success in the private sector, and I look forward to hearing uh, from Mr. Kumar about how he will measure success in terms of creating a favorable environment for U.S. Export, gro export growth. I'll also be asking Mr. Kumar what uh, role he anticipates playing as Congress considers trade promotion authority. After serving at the helm of the Maritime Administration as Acting Administrator since June of this year, I'm pleased to see that Paul, Captain Paul Janikin has been nominated to lead this important agency. Captain Janikin has a distinguished 30-year career in the United States Navy as a submarine commander and brings a wealth of maritime experience to bear in this position should he be confirmed. Mr. Chairman, while we must fulfill our obligation to carefully examine the qualifications of these nominees, I expect that we will work together to advance these nominations through the committee and hopefully the Senate in a timely manner, as we've done with several other Commerce Committee nominees this year. I do have to note, however, the irony of our holding this hearing on a day when the Senate has fundamentally changed the way it will consider such nominations. I think the dramatic rules change that we witnessed earlier today will have a lasting and damaging impact on the Senate and possibly even on the quality of nominees confirmed to executive and judicial positions because it will now require less bipartisan consensus to be confirmed. Nonetheless, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for holding this hearing. I look forward to uh, hearing the testimony from our witnesses. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Miller, there are people in the stakeholders that others have expressed skepticism about the STB's annual determination of re revenue adequacy mm -hmm. for Class 1s. Uh, that it's overly burdensome on the agency, that it doesn't give a true reflection of the, the uh, accurate picture of the railroad's uh, financial strength for any given year. Uh, what's your, uh, what are your thoughts about the usefulness of those uh, determinations? Well, um, uh, Senator Thune, thank you so much for the question. It is a really important one, and it's core in many ways. It gets to the question that was asked by Senator Rockefeller as well in, in many ways. And, um, Obviously, I'm a long ways from an expert in issues like revenue adequacy. Uh, if I'm confirmed, I have much to learn, and I intend to put my head down and learn it. I would say that it seems to me that the world changes and continues to change, and it is not unreasonable to take a step back and look at whether or not the way we approach and calculate revenue adequacy is, in fact, still the right way to do it. Um, I think any time you have a process that's in place for a long time, it may very well be in place because it's the right process. And I'm open to concluding that, but I also would be open to looking at whether or not there's another way to look at revenue adequacy. Do you, um, I'm sure you probably heard this in, in, as you prepared for this, but one of the complaints I hear from st constituents in my state is that it's overly costly and time consuming. Mm -hmm for a small shipper to bring mm -hmm. a case to the STB. Mm -hmm. And I, I know the board has made some progress in that area, but I'm wondering if there's uh, any suggestions that you might have about how the STB can be more accessible to shippers. Uh, there's, I think, room for improvement there still, and, and uh, particularly to small shippers. 
Yeah, and Senator, I have to say, I, I, I couldn't say today, I couldn't offer, I'm afraid, a very specific suggestion for improvement, but I am sympathetic to the concern that uh, it's very difficult, I think, for small shippers, just what you have to do to bring a case, the time period that it takes, it's a very high bar. Uh, the notion of simplifying that process is clearly one that the STB has uh, been aware of, paid attention to. They've worked to streamline their processes, whether or not that streamlining has gone far enough, I think is um, certainly an issue that we could consider farther. And I, I hope that as you get a chance to drill down a little bit and take a look at that, uh, if you have some suggestions that you could bring to bear uh, on that process that, as I said, there have been some changes there that I think have been in the right direction, but mm -hmm. I still think there's a significant room for mm -hmm. improvement. Uh, one of the most important functions of the STB is uh, determine the reasonableness of rates uh, charged to shippers. And again, this is something that can be a costly and, and time-consuming process. From your past work as a state transportation secretary, what concerns have you heard from shippers about how long it typically takes for the board to reach a decision on a rate reasonableness case? Oh, yeah. no, I, I think certainly for some shippers, you know, it's, it's, it's a big concern. One of the things I would say I found in our state, and um, I'm sure this is true in others as well, but the short line rail network that we've gotten in place has made a huge amount of difference. I think a lot of the issues that shippers were having in our state um, began to dissipate once we had a strong, viable short line rail system in place. And so we don't have the kinds of problems that I would say 15 years ago I would hear about more regularly from shippers. Um, but certainly uh, for a small agricultural shipper, it's a very high barrier. Yeah, I hope you'll continue to look at that because I think in some cases it is almost prohibitive for, for a lot of those smaller shippers. Um, Mr. Kumar, uh, I want to come back. I mentioned this in my open, opening remarks and ask you about TPA. Recently, Secretary Pritzker stated that she would actively advocate for trade promotion authority with Congress and the American people. Uh, I'm curious as to what role you anticipate playing as Congress considers uh, TPA. Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, the expansion of free trade zones is there. Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, the expansion of free trade um, agreements has been a big priority for President Obama. The country has 20 such free trade agreements. Uh, I would support all efforts that the President makes to expand free trade, uh, including his supporting him and the Secretary on, on efforts to advance the goals of expanding free trade and perhaps uh, using TPA as a way to make that more effective. Okay. And, and how, what, what are the, some of the factors that you would um, consider in measuring whether or not some of these policies have been successful when it comes to promoting greater exports? Because there are lots of uh, factors that contribute to export growth. And uh, if you're confirmed in this position, uh, I'm wondering how you, what's the metric that you use? How will you measure whether or not um, particular policies are success, success, successful in uh, promoting uh, export growth? Well, thank you for that question, Senator. You know, in my working experience, one of my major areas of work with my clients has been setting metrics. And as you pointed out, uh, as you implied, uh, high-level metrics may not be the answer. There are a number of other contributory factors that contribute to an end result. Um, in the Secretary's recent statement about an NEI 2.0, she mentioned uh, looking at the metrics and goals as a key part of looking at NEI. If confirmed, I would look forward to working with her on assisting in creating the right set of metrics and goals to measure these efforts. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time has expired. No. Thank you, Senator. Get to Mr. Janikin later.